Hollywood and the Stars, there was a US television documentary series narrated by Joseph Cotton, it aired in 1963, and it was subsequently used in many award shows and still is. Now, Christopher Palmer was a formidable force in the world of music. He was an authority on Benjamin Britten, and then in later years, he worked extensively with Charles Gerhardt, Maurice Jarre, and Elmer Bernstein on reconstructing and really showcasing the golden age of film music to a brand new generation. And Chris Palmer loved a big, expansive sound. And the arrangement here of the Magnificent Seven Suite is just that. It really delivers a fantastic punch. And do watch out for the French horn section who raise their bells at certain moments to the heavens in tribute to Elmer and Christopher.
huge Dublin welcome to Robert Townsend. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everyone, and good evening. I was lucky enough to work with Elmer Bernstein on approximately 30 of his albums when I was producer and vice president at Perez Saraband Records. My first album with Elmer was actually My Left Foot, way back in 1989. In the 1990s, when I had developed a relationship with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, Elmer and I did new recordings of his classic scores for To Kill a Mockingbird, The Magnificent Seven, and The Great Escape. The afternoon, or the day, that Elmer and I recorded Mockingbird in Glasgow was one of the most magical days of my life. Even for me, I could barely even believe that I was hearing one of my all-time favorite scores, one of really everyone's favorite scores, performed live with Elmer himself conducting. Many years later, when I was producing a concert in Los Angeles to celebrate the Berez Saraband 35th anniversary, I rounded up a huge group of composers to be part of it. Hans Zimmer was on piano. Danny Elfman was there. John Powell, Michael Giacchino, and Brian Tyler all conducted. It was a huge concert that was just overflowing with great composers and amazing music. But with all of that going on during the actual concert, I was trying to think of what score could possibly be the encore to a show that was encompassing the entire history of film music, from Korngold and Roja to Zimmer and Giacchino. And then I realized that the encore should be a score that everyone shared, something that I felt everyone would know and would have their own personal memories of, from when they heard it for the first time, when they saw the film for the first time, and who they were with. I realized that the best possible encore to a concert like this would not be a big fanfare or some huge rousing piece of music, but could and should simply, simply <laughs> be one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. The encore to a concert loaded with fire, already loaded with fireworks and show-stopping pieces would be Elmer Bernstein's To Kill a Mockingbird. And I am so happy and honored to introduce this performance of To Kill a Mockingbird, which I hope will help remind many of you of the very first time you might have heard this music. It is so warm and nostalgic, heartfelt and innocent. Elmer wrote it from Jem and Scout's point of view, looking at the world through the eyes, the innocent eyes of these children, but who were growing up so quickly. And if you are hearing the score and this music for the very first time just tonight, I hope that this performance might give you one of your own special cherished musical memories for years to come. This score is that special. To hear it live is transporting. Here is Elmer Bernstein's To Kill a Mockingbird.
as a gorgeous solo there by Katrina Ryan on flute. Now, I have some tweets to read out here, so the wonder of technology, I'm going to read these out seamlessly. Comedy scoring is too easily taken for granted. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd agree, yes. yes. Very, very fair point, Harvey. Uh, it can seem sometimes like it comes from nowhere. <coughs> Seeing and hearing sections from Airplane and Stripes perform live here tonight was both joyful and revealing. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Harvey says he saw these in a small Irish rural cinema in the 80s, and uh, yes, I'm sure that it was one little speaker, but wonderful. Thanks so much, Harvey. Uh, a Christmas Connor, the score to Airplane by Elmer is one of my favorites. It's not obvious, but instead it sounds like a B movie or disaster movie. It is, it, it, it's, so, it's, so, it's <laughs> so much humor, but yes, on the nose. And Dee McCarthy, first memories of Elmer's music was when I studied To Kill a Mockingbird for the junior cert and watched the film. Absolutely loved the haunting score. And finally, David Crimmin says, the two movies that bring me back to a child watching movies with my dad are The Great Escape and The Magnificent Seven. I now watch them with my kids. Thanks for the music, they bring me right back. Oh, David, lovely. Thanks so much for those tweets. Thank you very much. Now, we're gonna move on to something which is also, is actually quite poignant and, and relates to David's tweet just now. Takata for toy trains. Now, Charles and Ray Eames, were a husband and wife documentary filmmaking team. And this 1957 film has special meaning to you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <clears throat> uh, but let me digress to comedies for one second since we're talking about sure. them. The hard thing about writing comedies is when to be serious and when to be funny. If you're writing a Western, it's a Western. If you're writing a drama, it's a drama. If you're writing a comedy, maybe you should play it funny here and maybe you shouldn't can be really difficult. Anyway, oh, an airplane, I know this, my father, in writing that film, he cast himself in a role of a B-movie composer who was doing the best he could. <laughs> it's true. It is. Anyway, the Eames uh, world-renowned design team, if anybody's ever heard of an Eames chair, that's them, and uh, they were very close with my father starting in the, in the mid-50s uh, when my father was suffering from the blacklist and really didn't have all that much to do. Another composer recommended him to the Eames who made uh, this particular film, Takata for Toy Trains, which is nothing but toy trains going through a toy village from a toy station, and you can hear it all in the music. It's quite wonderful. But they made these films simply for the joy of making them. There was no money in it. I don't think my father ever got paid anything for doing them. And he did, I believe, 27 films for the Eames. And yeah, then this was, I think, the longest at 13 minutes. We're gonna hear about seven minutes of it. Um, but they were wonderful. I actually worked for Charles and Ray my first summer out of college, uh, sweeping the floor and other important tasks like that. And they were, they were just, uh, fantastic to be around. My father, he, be around Charles. Maybe you can be like Charles. Well, there was only ever going to be one of him. But it was great. And this music resonates with me so strongly because I was six years old when it was written. And it was toy trains. What could have been better? Anyway, here you are.